So if everyone is joining today and they didn't attend the session to, uh, yesterday, so my name is Sudhir Chauhan. I'm working as a chicken cake consultant here in Tribe29. And uh, in the demo, I have a Prometheus uh, instance, which is running as a, as a Kubernetes uh, pod inside my Kubernetes cluster installation. And then I have a Prometheus Docker instance, uh, which is running as a standalone Prometheus instance. So uh, here I'll be covering two scenarios. Uh, so first scenario would be how to get your Prometheus instance pod uh, monitored using uh, uh, CheckMK. Uh, here I have, uh, I'm using the Prometheus data source program rule. Uh, before that, uh, uh, I will show you. So this is the IP address of the Kubernetes cluster. And uh, I have set it the data source program to be no CheckMK agent and all configured special agents. Uh, other than that, uh, I have also created a, a DCD rule here. Uh, I have created a DCD rule here, uh, which is going to create uh, all the piggybacked hosts from Prometheus uh, uh, to to this folder, Prometheus Cube host. And uh, I have restricted that to the source host Prometheus Cube, which is the which is the source host in this case. Uh, let's go to the Prometheus data source program. Uh, let's, uh, I will first show you the Prometheus, uh, uh, the, the part that I have on my Kubernetes uh, installation. So this is the IP address, the HTTP. Here uh, we offer right now three script targets, C advisor, kubestate metrics, and node explorer. For the demo, I'm using kubestate metrics. Uh, and uh, other than that, in the second demo, I will show you how we can, uh, uh, for example, there are uh, people who create custom metrics. There are developers in the team who create the custom metrics and how we can get that custom metric being monitored inside CheckMK. So I will sh be showing that in the second uh, uh, instance uh, that I have prepared for the demo. And uh, here I'll be, uh, in that case, I will be using uh, PromQL queries. So uh, just to show you how the, Docker instance looks like. Uh, so that's where my, uh, I hope you are also able to see the Prometheus, uh, 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 to, to see my console. I actually figured out a way how to increase the font. Uh, I hope it's visible for everyone. So uh, these are the pods which are running in my Prometheus uh, namespace. And uh, I'm doing a port forwarding to the Prometheus uh, instance uh, so that I can access it on my, uh, so that I can access it on my uh, console here. So this is what, uh, uh, after the port forwarding, I can see that the Prometheus instance uh, is uh, connected and I already installed the, 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 the cube state metrics here. Uh, yeah, so I already installed the cube state metrics pod uh, as part of the Prometheus uh, uh, pod bundle. Uh, now, since so this is already up and we have already showed you the data source program. Now let's uh, activate the DCD connection or before that, let's go to uh, Prometheus cube server. And uh, r let's run a discovery uh, which shows that uh, it has recognized the Prometheus instance and uh, it's able to connect to the Prometheus uh, pod uh, or instance. And other than that, uh, let's also enable our DCD rule. And let's activate the changes. So uh, now, as you can already see on the screen, that uh, the resources uh, that are uh, that are generated by the cube state metrics straight script target are already 
trying to show you some metrics. Uh, so it has already started creating. So the DCD daemon has already started creating hosts. And uh, yeah, so it created the host. It ran the service discovery. And now it activated the changes automatically. So now when we go to our so when I, when we go to our host tactical overview we already see that the metrics are here so initially this was completely blank but now we see that we have 39 uh, kubernetes objects created inside uh, this uh, folder uh, and uh, i uh, we can also go from the host tactical overview to see uh, each of the kubernetes objects that we created using the uh, kubelet uh, cube uh, Cube metrics uh, scrape target. For example, I can show you some of the metrics. Uh, the the metrics that get queried using the Prometheus integration are almost the same. What we have with the, when we use the Kubernetes integration using the Prometheus, I can uh, monitor any Kubernetes cluster and uh, get these same metrics uh, queried using this integration. Other than that. Uh, if I go to the Prometheus Docker instance, uh, oh, sorry, not this one. So this is the Prometheus build check that gets uh, activated upon when you, whenever you create your Prometheus integration. It says that uh, this is the scrape targets. We have in total 23 scrape targets. Uh, and this is the storage retention that is for 10 days. And uh, so basically, it is trying to connect to the API and uh, pull this information and create show, show up this information in this ch check that gets created when you, invent, when you run an inventory. Now let's. So this was uh, one one part of the demo. Let's move on to the next, the second one. Uh, so I here I created a Prometheus Docker instance uh, which runs uh, uh, for which I, I can access it on my local host on port ninety ninety. Here I'm going to choose the uh, special agent, and before that, uh, let me show you the. So what I'm doing here is uh, the same thing. I'm not using any scrape targets, but I'm using the PromQL query. I wrote a custom metric. Uh, I, I mean, I have an application, uh, a, a Golang application, which uh, runs on my Docker container here. Uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm running three Docker containers. Uh, uh, one is uh, for like a Prometheus Golang uh, 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 a, a simple application that generates some metrics on port 8080. And then I have a Prometheus instance running on port 9090. Uh, if I have some time, I will also like to show you the Grafana uh, integration, which I set up, uh, uh, which is running on port 3000. Yeah, these are the two containers. So the, fir the, this con the Prometheus Golang container is actually emitting out some metrics. And uh, I would like to, uh, so this is just like a scenario where a developer has uh, generated a custom metric and uh, how this custom metric, we how, how we can uh, monitor this custom metric inside CheckMK. So my Prometheus Golang Docker, uh, Docker container is generating a metric. Uh, let's see this metric. Uh, so probably, so for the demo, I'll be using this metric, Golang mic and counter. Uh, as far as the documentation is concerned uh, for the script for the for the PromQL, uh, we are uh, so at the moment it is important uh, that the query only returns a single value. So for example, if I go to my uh, the Prometheus instance that is monitoring my app application that is emitting out this uh, uh, custom metric, uh, this is the this is my uh, custom metric. And if it, if I would like to see what is the targets, sorry, I spelled it incorrect. 
So yeah, I have two targets. One is uh, obviously the local host, uh, obviously my Prometheus instance itself. And then this is the second uh, Docker container, uh, the Prometheus hyphen Golang one, which I am trying to monitor. Uh, and out of this, I'm trying to monitor a custom metric and bring this inside CheckMK. Now, since we already saw the, the, the data source program rule, wherein I configure the custom metric, uh, now I will, I will inventorize this host. So as you can see here, uh, this was the custom metric that appeared inside the uh, Prometheus, which was generated by uh, an application, which again was running on a Docker container. And uh, this custom metric, uh, I could get this inside CheckMK. So using the prompt QL inside the Prometheus data source uh, program, I could get the custom metric uh, being monitored inside CheckMK. So this is actually uh, one of the scenarios wherein uh, you bridge the gap between uh, the de uh, the developers and the operations team, uh, wherein uh, they have their own Prometheus instance running somewhere, and now they want to integrate with CheckMK, and uh, they would like this custom metric to be monitored. So this is uh, uh, one of the examples that I showed you. Uh, so yeah. Till this point, does anybody have any questions or shall I move on to uh, a quick demo on uh, the integration with Grafana? Uh, I had a question. Uh, when you use a PromQL query, you can also select a metric. Uh, where does the metric list come from? Is that a, a static list or, or is it being dynamically configured when you add a uh, Prometheus endpoint? So for example, uh, if your metric or your query uh, gives a single value, then you can just mention it like this. Uh, for example, So in this case, uh, this was my uh, uh, the the metric name, and these are the these are the different labels associated with it. Mm -hmm. So that's and this is the value for it, and it returns the single value. Okay. So for example, yeah. if you have multiple rows uh, like Golang, my counter, the same name but different uh, uh, labels, then you have to provide those different labels. Otherwise, it won't understand. Yeah, but but my question is about the the rule for PromQL. Um, can you go to the to your second yeah this one uh, so this metric level is basically uh like i'm getting a value right now uh mm -hmm. like 2000 or something here uh like i'm getting a value of 27000 and something uh mm -hmm. now you can configure thresholds here based on these lower levels and upper levels yeah but, but, but for example if you have a lot of custom metrics mm -hmm. like this then you can uh, also uh, configure a simple uh, a single rule, uh, which is his uh, Prometheus custom services. And here you can define a metric level for all your custom metrics. Uh, yeah, um, but my question based on the label. Uh, my question was more. Um, I, I think it's now under your third tab uh, when you define your PromQL query. You could uh -huh. also, um, yeah, it's, it's about here. You can uh -huh. add a checkbox metric that's, that's just above your, your PromQL query. Ah, OK, sorry. Uh, yeah. So, so the, the select metric, is that a static list or a dynamic list? Uh, this is something that is stored inside the uh, CheckMK, and uh, we have possibly covered almost uh, most of the metrics. But if there is something missing, then uh, uh, there is a way. There should be a way to add it. I have not tried this feature yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, uh, this is something that is stored inside CheckMK, and uh, this is not coming from your Prometheus instance. Okay, and yeah, then. I, I now know why, why it doesn't show my metrics in the list. Uh, 
but that's um, like Mike. We're gonna do a call anyway about it with the developer of that. Mm -hmm. and then that's we right. will um, try this and showcase this to him, and then we can see. Okay, what can we do about it? Yeah. I wonder if the last in here is one of our developers. <laughs> Because he could actually answer it then. <laughs> uh, do we have any further questions? Okay, Lars is typing, so <laughs> let's see. Ah, um, <laughs> now I understand what it actually is. Um, you can, the, the metrics, uh, the, the dropdown which you have there, it actually tells you how this metric should then um, behave within check and K, for example, how um, in graphs, like most graphs actually show you units and stuff in check and K. And so you can actually tell CheckMK, hey, this is a metric which is, for example, um, an active connection. And then CheckMK knows how to interpret that better. Uh, okay. Yeah, thanks. So if, for example, this is um, a... Um, can you check if there's something like CPU load in the suit here, in the metric? Like um, if you're in the drop-down menu? There is CPU metric balance. And yeah, there is memory use. You see, that's basically yeah, there is. all the metrics which check which CheckMK knows. And um, so, if there's um, any met, if this metric should resemble or like uh, is resembles any of the metrics which CheckMK knows how to handle properly, then you can assign this. And then, for example, if it's um, like a, some CPU total in milliseconds then it will know that it's actually the unit is milliseconds and stuff because it can't get this information out from prometheus because prometheus doesn't store this information or doesn't know about it as well okay that that makes sense thanks and that also means that this last is one of our developers <laughs> <laughs> so if there are no further Questions, shall we move to the Grafana stuff or shall we wait? Yeah, why not if there's no question? I think we're going to move on. All right. Okay, cool. So uh, I was, uh, uh, while we were, while I was preparing, while I was uh, uh, Testing the Prometheus, I also tried the Grafana integration, which I would like to show it with you, uh, share with you on uh, 2.00b5. Uh, so basically, uh, we already have a GitHub project uh, for CheckMK uh, Grafana data source, Grafana CheckMK data source. Uh, this is also on our official documentation. There's a there's a link to this GitHub project. And uh, there, here, there are instructions how to set up the integration between CheckMK and Grafana. Uh, for my demo, I have uh, set up everything on, I created a Grafana uh, Docker container, and then uh, I installed the plugin for CheckMK. And uh, after that, I configured the data source uh, as described here, which needs a uh, the url for your site and uh, there should be an automation user that you should create here uh, i mean you already have an automation user you can directly use those credentials here inside and after you click on save and test which will show that the connection to the data source works fine uh, then we have some examples described in the documentation uh, which shows uh, how we can query or uh, there are some uh, different modes like predefined graph, the single graph and combined graph. Uh, and uh, that's how uh, you can uh, query the status uh, from uh, CheckMK and show, that, show it up in Grafana. So now I will uh, show you 
online demo here. So basically, uh, this is how I this I already put this into my Docker container here, and uh, the data source rule looks like looks like this. Uh, so I'm monitoring my FOSTEM site, and uh, I already copied everything here. So the data source, if I click on save and test, it says that the data source is working. Now, if I go to the, the dashboards and I want to create a dashboard for uh, one of the hosts, uh, which I have inside chicken K. Uh, so this is the data source, which shows that it's, it, this is the data source that we are using for the query. And uh, here I can, I will show you how I can, or oh, let's first try the predefined graphs uh, for the host Fostim. So yeah, so this is like uh, the information. Uh, so all this information that we see here is being fetched from CheckMK via live status. And uh, you can configure multiple sites here. Like uh, there, uh, right now, I have only one single site. But if you have more sites, then you will get a list of the sites here. And uh, other than that, if you have, uh, you can also have, you also have the possibility to uh, sh do a regex on the host as well as a regex on the services. For example, I would like to see all the file systems. Uh, then uh, I can show it like this, and let's go down. So uh, all my file systems on the host force them, I can show it up here uh, using the regex. I can also do the search based on the tags. So yeah, this is uh, uh, this. This is pretty cool feature, and uh, with this you can uh, easily say, see everything from your CheckMK inside Grafana. If you already have a Grafana instance running, you could uh, try this uh, by uh, by using the CheckMK Grafana data source. So. Uh, are there any questions for this demo? Uh, and the Grafana is using the uh, the live sta status for generating the graphs. That's right. Okay, and and uh, the the um, if I uh, how how many uh, days are being held in the live status? Uh. I think it's always an active connection. So whenever you try to query it from here, mm -hmm. uh, the retention period of data storage uh, should uh, matter only in uh, in this case uh, in CheckMK because uh, this is like uh, whenever you connect it uh, to Grafana, uh, mm -hmm. whenever you pull the data, it will be available. You can uh, see the you can uh, based on the changes here, you can uh, fetch that data for that particular time period. Okay, and 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 how many days of di data is being held in in live status? Can I go, for example, go back for two months or? So, uh, for example, uh, when you when you do a service search inside ChickMK, mm -hmm. uh, that is the retention of data. I don't remember the exact uh, number of days for how much. Uh, uh, maybe Alex can uh, does an idea about that for how long maybe we store standard standard uh, period. I think is two or four years. Um, I think that uh, I have, would have to check the default values. Okay. Uh, but it's um, I, I like the metrics are stored um, 
yeah, for quite a long period. And they, they are stored in the RD format. So basically, um, the resolution will get decreased over time. So um, while you have one minute um, resolution for data from the last couple of um, hours and days, I think at some point it goes to half hour resolution when it's like data, which is one year ago. You can all modify the setting um, in mm -hmm. the check in case. So, but like the good thing is like the, the, the size, the, the benefit of this is that the size of the, for whatever service will always stay the same with this kind of um, how no matter how long you record the stuff um, and you can uh, that makes it a little bit better for planning how much hardware space you actually need for monitoring um, and you can adapt that so you can change these default values mm -hmm. you can look them up how much they are actually yeah I think 400 days by by default yeah so, so in fact the the live status demon is looking into the RRD files I think so. Okay, yeah, thanks. That that makes sense. I mean, that's what I think um, should happen, and I think that otherwise it wouldn't. Um, I th because I've seen like Grafana instances which have from us which have a lot of data, so it, that must be that they. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alex, unfortunately, is um, still have has to take care of the tree, which has, um, <laughs> which okay. is, uh, yeah. Um, I think his neighbor is still complaining. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, you you could also find the uh, so Lars also shared a link inside the, the persistence of data for how long uh, the data is persisted uh, and for each metric Four years. Uh, you can yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's answering my question. Thanks. All right. Uh, so, do we have any further questions? Maybe you can also join the call conf call and ask the questions here as well, or yeah, whichever way you feel like. You can also ask that in chat. Mm 